The 19th Summit of the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, or COMESA, as it's more commonly known around here, is underway in Madagascar's capital. Now, this year's theme focuses on inclusive and sustainable industrialization. High-level delegates are discussing how to boost regional integration and trade within the bloc. COMESA is the largest regional economic organization within Africa. 19 member states and a population of over 400 million. That's a lot of latent potential there. But it has been struggling with a drop in average GDP growth among her members. Integration is a game of winners. We must eliminate the bottlenecks, the barriers, the hurdles and the roadblocks that are our artificial borders and replace them with stepping stones and bridges that will bridge our people, services, goods, trade, business, investment. We must continuously reform our processes and systems and reform our institutions so that we eliminate pilferage, wastage, corruption, and matters that undermine the transformation the industrialization, the manufacturing sector in our continent. We are facing two major headwinds that are a serious threat to our economic prosperity. In fact, if you look at statistics of what we did from 2000 to 2008, that average is much higher than what we have witnessed from 2009 to 2014 to 2016 because of weakened de demand. And so we must shift away from commodity dependence and industrialization is the answer. Let's get the latest developments from Clementine Logan. She's live in Antananarivo right now with more information uh, from the summit. Uh, Clem, there's been a range of meetings uh, leading up to the Heads of State Summit uh, today and tomorrow. Bring us up to speed with the developments so far. That's right, Rama. In the last few days, we've seen the Intergovernmental Committee of COMESA, Council of Ministers and Member States Foreign Affairs Ministers all hold various meetings, the latter specifically on building uh, peace building initiatives, developing early warning signs for any simmering conflicts in the region and a bid to secure cross-border trade. Um, other developments have been the European Union's allocation of over $3 billion towards its new strategic initiative that it says will encourage investment in Africa. We've also seen the United States Asian Agency for International Development contribute over $70 million uh, towards boosting its own partnership with COMESA, so into regional trade and integration as well as agriculture development. And then, of course, this morning at the official opening ceremony of the Heads of State Summit, we saw the handover of power from the outgoing chair Ethiopia to host country Madagascar. Uh, we've also just learnt that Burundi will be hosting the next summit and will take over as vice chairperson. But certainly delegates that spoke today uh, reiterated uh, calls made by the chair to members to swiftly implement the policies and strategies agreed upon last year that will boost interregional trade so improvements in economic and political governance expanding infrastructure um, and also looking at other measures that they can take um, such as eliminating visas for members of the region as well indeed let's talk about the tripartite free trade area it's one of those flagship agreements but not much progress has been seen since that deal was signed with a lot of fanfare in egypt in june 2015 uh, since all the countries that have signed the deal are yet to ratify it what's causing this delay Well, just this morning, the tripartite free trade area arrangement was once again lauded as a major success for COMESA last year. But as you say, progress has been slow. Delegates certainly agree that this is crucial in moving the bloc towards its goal of what it's calling this year inclusive and sustainable industrialization. Um, but, you know, little has been signed and sealed so far. And earlier this week, uh, the COMESA Intergovernmental Committee did say that a lot of outstanding work remained to be done in terms of its implementation. It recommended that members um, uh, speed up that process in order to boost intra-regional trade specifically for manufactured goods. And at the end of today's session, members, we understand, were given the opportunity to put pen to paper to sign up to that arrangement. But we should know by tomorrow just how many of them might have done that and if any progress has been made in this area. Indeed. One last question for you, Clem. Kenya has uh, repeatedly asked her trading partners for more and more time to protect her sugar industries from cheaper imports within Kamesa,
but his government has repeatedly failed for the better part of a decade now to actually follow through on its promise to privatize the sugar sector. So why did Kamesa grant Kenya yet another one-year extension? Well, exactly. Kamesa's arrangement with Kenya was due to expire in February, but it has agreed during this summit to give Kenya another two years of restrictions on cheaper sugar imports from the trade bloc. Now, it cited Kenya's upcoming elections slated for August next year as one of the reasons behind its decision, but the Council of Ministers also noted that there were what it called pending court sessions, which were preventing Kenya from privatizing its state-owned sugar mills. Now, Kenya's dominant cash crop is sugar. It's asked for these extensions over five times now. Um, Kamesa has said explicitly that it wants Kenya to privatize its uh, state-owned sugar millers, as well as diversify its revenue chain, among other things. And so members will likely be keeping a very close eye on Kenya um, to see whether it can indeed keep its, get its house in order rather um, during this latest extension and before it runs out, as many feel it might even be the last. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you for the update. That's uh, Clementine Logan, of course, live from the capital of Madagascar. Let's